A lot of people like to give the MCU crap these days, and I'm certainly one of them. But you have to give it to them. At least having one creative voice that's kind of over everything means that everything is somewhat connected, and you can kind of see what the MCU is and kind of where it's heading and all that stuff. When you move over to Warner Brothers and the DCEU, DC characters and whatnot, it is very, very confusing. It actually makes the comic book universe look a little bit more streamlined. What is DCEU Canada these days? I think a lot of people are asking that question, especially after this latest Black Adam trailer that came out, which initially featured a clip from the Joss Whedon Justice League movie. Is that in Canada anymore? It appeared perhaps from the initial trailer for Black Adam that it was, but now people are having to question that because they immediately started making changes. That's the biggest problem here. Under Walter Hamada and the leadership, over the DCEU, DC films right now. There's no clear creative direction or voice of what they're doing. They're just throwing so much crap at the wall, you don't even know what's going on anymore. We've got the Matt Reeves version, The Batman, Robert Pattinson, but we've also got Michael Keaton coming back as Batman from 1989, but it also sounds like we're getting Bat Fleck in the Aquaman movie. Like, how many Batman characters do you need in one extended universe? You have a Batman film that made a pretty decent amount of money, very successful, but it's not connected to your Joker movie, which made even more money. Why would these characters not eventually get together? It's just so much mismanagement on the part of everybody. Obviously, it started out with Zack Snyder, and he had, I guess, a concrete idea of what the DCEU under his vision was going to be. They got partway through it. They almost got through the Justice League movie, which was originally going to be two movies. They removed him, brought in Joss Whedon, so now we have another creative direction, which is completely different. After that, they decided to shelve the DCU, perhaps. I'm not really even sure. But then they start making other movies that are supposed to be part of the DCEU, and it's just this big hodgepodge, and they have no one to blame but themselves, and people don't even know what DC canon is anymore. In a recent article, the direct said, Warner Brothers is in a tricky place with the future of the DC Extended Universe as movies like Black Adam and The Flash prepare for their arrivals. But another big question that remains is which movies from the franchise's past are the true canon version of the story? Specifically, that debate is between Zack Snyder and Joss Whedon's direction for Justice League. Following the reports about Whedon's misconduct on the set of Justice League, fans have cried out to Warner Brothers to make Zack Snyder's Justice League canon for the DCEU, even though all indications pointed toward that honor going to the original film. Obviously on the heels of that, and people not liking that version of the movie, and I don't know anyone that thought it was good, the release of the Snyder Cut movement started, and people wanted to see Zack Snyder's original version, original idea, original vision, of what his Justice League movie was going to be. Because we know, for the most part, he shot the entire film. Obviously he didn't get reshoots because they ended up rewriting it, and I think refilming a bunch of it, and just rejiggering, reconfiguring the story and whatnot, until the mess that we ended up getting. Warner Brothers and Walter Hamada decided that that was a good idea. They spent more money and they released Zack Snyder's version of the film, obviously on HBO Max. While there are some parts and pieces from the Joss Whedon Justice League and the Zack Snyder Justice League that have some overlap, they are very distinctively different films. But the filmmaker, Zack Snyder himself, when he was getting ready to do the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League and do the reshoots and everything, even admitted himself, he said this will not be catered. But apparently that might not be true after what we saw this past week. A TV ad for Black Adam incited angry complaints from fans due to the use of a scene featuring Steppenwolf from Joss Whedon's theatrical cut of Justice League. In response, Warner Brothers removed the scene from the trailer, replacing it with a different shot from another DCEU movie. Additionally, Black Adam star Dwayne Johnson posted it to his social media pages with the caption corrected. This is leading fans to believe that Warner Brothers is moving away from considering Whedon's take on Justice League canon to the DCEU, even though no footage from the Snyder Cut was used to replace it. For the love of God, can we please get somebody, anybody, in charge of the DCEU to decide what counts and what doesn't count? At this point, you're just pissing fans off every time you go to the well and you put up a trailer like this and you start including scenes from one of the two versions of what could have happened within the DCU. You have a very vocal fan base that have stated they don't like Joss Whedon's take on Justice League and they want Zack Snyder's take to be canon within the DCEU. Either you want to do it or you don't want to do it. They got to stop doing all this stuff half-assed. They're making it so confusing. It's so hard 
to be a DC character fan when it comes to movies and streaming these days. Perhaps they should just go with the Arkham Knights version of all this stuff. At least those video games were good, and they had good versions of, of the characters and stuff. And the worst thing about all this, they're going out there, and they're making trailers, and they're including seeds. They're putting it out there for people to watch. They're getting feedback, and then they're removing it. But it appears, in all likelihood, none of this is going to matter in a couple of years anyway. Rumors continue pointing to next year's The Flash movie actually erasing everything that came before it in the DCEU, giving the company a fresh slate to develop new DC adventures after this franchise earned such mixed reactions over the years. Combine that with how many new movies and TV shows have been canceled, and it certainly makes sense why both versions of Justice League could be put on the back burner for some time. If you're just going to erase everything that you've done, like out of existence, like, oh, we're going to reset the timeline, why include any of it anyway? Like, what is the point? Is it just to confuse people? Is it just to make people mad? I don't think Walter Hamada and anyone associated with DC Films has one fucking clue what they want to do. Obviously, this all kind of runs into the rumors that have been going around. They are licensing out some DC characters under Warner Brothers Discovery. There's also the prevalent rumor in Hollywood that Warner Brothers Discovery after 2024, 2025 likely won't be in existence anyway because Discovery is going to sell the Warner Brothers part over to NBC Universal anyway. It is absolute amateur hour at DC Films when it comes to the DCEU and the mismanagement that's been going on for years now. Not to mention the other little fact that apparently nobody with any talent in Hollywood wants David Zaslav's job to oversee DC films in the DCEU. He wants somebody to run a 10-year plan as the architect of the DCEU, kind of like Kevin Feige at MCU. He's been offering this job out for months now. I know for a fact that before he ever became the CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, David Zaslav was sending out feelers to people associated with comic books and movies to see if they would be interested in the job. And they weren't, shockingly, right? Nobody wanted this job then. And now, with all the instability and the cancellations and everything going on, nobody wants the job now. I wonder why this is happening. And the big loser in the end isn't David Zaslav. It's not Warner Brothers Discovery. It's not DC Films. It's the fans of the DC characters because all this instability is going to kill all the characters. It's going to kill the interest. And it's going to be much harder to make successful movies and streaming shows based on DC characters if they continue down this path. I've talked about this for quite some time, talking about the comics, the streaming, television, all that stuff. This is all going to destroy DC characters and the interest in them. If you haven't seen this video, you definitely need to check it out. If you don't see it here, there's also a link in the video description.